What's up guys, welcome back to Ubad's lab and today we're going to be making copper acetate crystals with chemicals you can find at home. So copper acetate is made through the reaction between hydrogen peroxide, uh, acetic acid, which is vinegar, and copper. And when you react these three things together, you get this blue solution that when you crystallize, you should get some pretty beautiful copper acetate crystals. And here is the chemical structure of uh, copper acetate. And the main uses for uh, copper acetate include being a catalyst, being an oxidizer, and it's also used in some pigments for a blue and green paint. But the main reason that we're going to be making it is because it looks really cool. So uh, copper acetate is actually pretty safe uh, unless you ingest it, which is uh, pretty easy to avoid. And um, the only real danger actually comes from the hydrogen peroxide if it's concentrated because that can cause chemical burns. So we'll have to make sure to wear uh, protective eyewear and gloves. So the equipment for this experiment includes the three reactants, which include hydrogen peroxide. Uh, I'm gonna be using 30% hydrogen peroxide but I actually had seen it work with 3% hydrogen peroxide, but uh, the reaction will be way stronger with 30%. Uh, you need acetic acid, which is vinegar, um, and you need copper. Uh, the source of copper that we're gonna be using is uh, pennies, and you need to make sure that the date on the penny reads before 1982, because after that, the uh, pennies become only 5% copper, and before 1982, they're 95% copper. So there's a pretty big difference there. And uh, if you're not able to find that, you can also use copper wiring, which is pretty pure copper. All right, so I've got my Erlenmeyer flask set up on my hot plate. I'm gonna start off by making our first solution consisting of acetic acid and hydrogen peroxide. And it's going to be 50% hydrogen peroxide and 50% uh, acetic acid, which is just white vinegar. So we're going to start off by adding um, 50 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide and then 50 milliliters of white vinegar. So first, this is the hydrogen peroxide. And just around 50 milliliters of 30% hydrogen peroxide that I just added. And I'm going to start and measure out uh, 50 milliliters of white vinegar okay and just around 50 milliliters of white vinegar now And you want to add this slowly. All right. And now we have our solution of uh, hydrogen peroxide and white vinegar. And we're going to want to uh, mix this and heat this up until it reaches a boil. And then we'll get ready to add our copper. All right, I've been heating up the solution and it's almost at a boil. You can see some bubbles escaping. So I'm going to start by adding uh, the pennies now. I have uh, two pennies, as you can see. Uh, one is uh, 1970 and was 1975. So it should be good. All right, I'm going to try not to make too big of a splash, but I'm just going to drop it in now. and immediately you can see the solution starts bubbling. I'm gonna turn down the heat a little, but wow, that's insane. Uh, I'm gonna add one more penny now. There we go. Damn, I didn't expect the reaction to go this fast. Oh. 
Okay, that could have been bad. Jeez. All right, I turned off the hot plate and got the reaction a little under control here. Whew, okay, so I got the reaction under control finally, and I got the hot plate out of the way, and seems like my hot plate was not damaged, so we're all good there. And the reaction has been uh, bubbling for a while now. It's crazy exothermic, and I almost burned my hand while trying to get it off the hot plate. And it's finally starting to turn blue, showing that the copper acetate is being synthesized and we're gonna have to let this sit and we don't have to apply any more heat I believe and just keep on mixing this reaction is really beautiful to just watch uh, and it's actually gonna take a while for this to get completed so I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy the reaction alright I've been babysitting this reaction for almost an hour now uh, occasionally mixing it and applying some heat and it's become a way brighter blue color now and it's settled down and you'll notice that we have 50 milliliters and this is due so to some of it being boiled off and also to the spillage that occurred and then I also removed the copper pennies and this is what they look like now they're a bit thinner and it also blackened out and now we're gonna try to crystallize this all right we're gonna see if adding this to an ice bath will cause the copper acetate to crystallize And I'm gonna let it sit like that for a little bit. Okay, so after adding it to the ice bath, I wasn't able to get a precipitate. So I'm now gonna try to boil it down and see if we can get any crystals from that. And if not, it's okay because we're still able to get the copper acetate and it looked pretty cool. The solution has finally reached a boil and we're gonna let it boil down until there's just a little bit of the liquid left. Alright, so the solution has been boiling on the hot plate for a little bit now and I'm going to quickly cool it off by putting it in an ice bath. And then we're going to run it through some filter paper and hopefully see if we can get any crystals. Alright, it's starting to rain so I gotta finish this up fast. Uh, I'm going to um, forget about crystallizing it and just store some into a test tube. Alright, got it into this. And I'm just gonna pour some of it into this test tube over here. And it's just gonna be something nice to keep. It's okay that we didn't get the crystals because this copper sulfate blue solution is still really cool. Alright, and this is it our final product of a uh, copper acetate. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram because I do a lot of channel updates there and post some pretty cool chemistry stuff. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you enjoyed the video. And feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. And stay tuned for my next video where I'm gonna be working through another calculus problem.